Forty-five years ago, U.S. civil rights leader, the Reverend Martin Luther King, gave his iconic I Have a Dream speech. In it, Dr. King called on a violent and racially divided country to live together in harmony. On Tuesday, a day after Martin Luther King Day, with a swearing-in of Barack Obama as the 44th president, the United States took an epic leap beyond its dark legacy of slavery and towards healing racial tensions. But does this mean that King's dream has finally come true? It has been a long, torturous road for African Americans. From the days of slavery to the epoch-defining struggles of the Civil Rights Movement to the White House. And Barack Obama's inauguration paid tribute to those who created a dream and fought for it. We are so grateful to live in this land, a land of unequaled possibility, where the son of an African immigrant can rise to the highest level of our leadership. And we know today that Dr. King and a great cloud of witnesses are shouting in heaven. Martin Luther King was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was a Baptist minister who became a civil rights activist early in his career. He led the Montgomery bus boycott of 1955-56 after Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white man. And his work led to the 1963 March on Washington. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, in front of an estimated crowd of 200,000, he delivered his famous speech. Because I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream to do. Dr. King's effort raised public awareness of the civil rights movement. His campaign to end racial discrimination through civil disobedience and other nonviolent means earned him a Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Because Dr. King's dream was not a black dream, it was not a white dream, it was a human dream. On April 4, 1968, Dr. King was shot on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. He was only 39 years old. Just the day before, he delivered a speech whose vision is particularly momentous now. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. Facing the Lincoln Memorial, where Dr. King once stood, Obama's calls for hope and unity across political and racial we'll divisions echo King's. Many black people are overcome with emotion. And to see the President of the United States in the seal, and all of these people from all the armed forces marching to honor a person where, when I grew up, we weren't considered even good, you know, even good enough. The 2008 election threw up some unconventional results. One of the early surprises was the support Obama attracted among white voters. His victory in the Iowa caucus, a state that is largely white and rural, shattered an assumption about black Americans in politics. Exit polls also showed a large youth vote that went in favor of Barack Obama. School integration and the increasing visibility of African Americans in sports and entertainment have played a role in changing racial attitudes. What we're seeing are uh, extraordinary shifts uh, in the nature of our population. Uh, we have a generation of Americans who are growing up in much more diverse environments. Uh, we have a generation of Americans who are uh, experiencing difference in popular cultural forms. Their workplaces are more diverse. Uh, their social primary spaces are more diverse. The observers, however, question the assumption that Dr. King's dream of racial equality has been realized through Obama's victory. But to think about 
that achievement as in some significant way the realization of King's dream is to reduce King's prophetic witness to simply an aspiration for a kind of political status, a political leadership. The socioeconomic gap between America's white majority and African American minority that makes up around 13 percent of the population is called the glass ceiling. The black middle class has grown since the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Yet African Americans on average experience higher mortality rates and lower life expectancy. Many black youths view going to prison as a natural step in their lives. 22% of black men in recent generations have prison records. Only 12% have college degrees. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, last December the unemployment rate rose to 7.2%, and among black Americans the unemployment rate is just under 12%. It's time for us to work even harder, because we still don't have equity in jobs across the country. We still don't have the equity of education. There are certain areas of our country that are less educated than third world countries. You have disproportionate balances of socioeconomic status, so he would say we still have a lot of work to do. For an older generation that witnessed segregation and participated in the civil rights movement, Obama's victory comes with a reminder. The Reverend Samuel Billy Kyles was with Dr. King when he was assassinated. Young people will ask me, do you think uh, Dr. King's dream has been realized now? I said, much of it has. All of it hasn't. It was so much to do. And I said, I don't think there will come a time when we can say, now that Dr. King's dream is realized, we can go to the beach. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, each generation must find what it can do to make the dream continue to live for people all over the world. Dry leaves fall, new buds will open. In Harlem, a historic African-American neighborhood in New York, teenagers view their future with optimism. With America's first black president in the White House, they now have the reason to hold on to their dream. All those years ago, Martin Luther King showed the American people a peaceful path to the promised land. For blacks, the election of Barack Obama brought the land within real sight. But if economic, social and educational barriers still exist, America has quite a way to go. That brings us to the end of this story as well as to the end of this week's program. If you've got suggestions, you can email us as always at worldinsight at cctv.com. Also, join us at the same time next week for a New Year's special right here on World Insight. I'm James Chow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.